गुरुवे गौरचंजय राधिकाय तदाले कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तर भक्ताय नमो नम पंचकुतुर्वीशा पिपा सिंधुवे बचा पतितना पावन एव्यो वैष्णवेव्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गृधार शिव सरिषि गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरि हरि हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरि हरि so um i am responding to a question that i received and it was in regards to not directly i don't believe a spiritual subject matter as i mentioned before i have a preference to more or less deal with siddhant or with uh sastric uh discussions or or other things related directly to our uh path of bhakti but i also recognize that we live in a stage of unfoldment for the most part and that it very well is a fact that being in that stage of unfoldment that sometimes you know pragmatic issues may need to be discussed um i don't want to discuss them in a protracted way or um you know get into long drawn out discussions on these things but um i've lived always by a statement that i heard from my guru parapadma it was during the y2k the whole millennium transition thing and one devotee asked shila gurudev a question shila gurudev given the circumstances that we're facing given the upcoming changes that may be taking place due to the millennium change and this and that what should we do so shiva gurudev gave a very uh, profound answer he said chant uh, be prudent and chant hari krishna that was directly his answer be prudent and chant hari krishna so that always resonated with me because sometimes and forgive me for moving the camera around a little bit here but sometimes um the prudent part uh seems to not come into focus as clearly as the idea of chanting hari krishna which we know uh is the uh ultimate situation for any devotee who's trying to advance in this process and realize uh the goal which is love of god so but be prudent uh what does that mean and how does it how does it take shape in a life where one is trying to unfold in devotion so we live at a time that is unique and that time is that it is the era of shriman mahaprabhu it is called the danya kali yug so it is kali yug and the features of kali yug are also present at the same time within this kali yug is the great and extraordinary gift of shriman mahaprabhu that within that name that shri guru dev said to chant chirada ta damni jagupta vitam swarnama premamrita atyudhara apamra yogi tithara gora even that the most fallen person in this age is evidenced by jagai and madai in that lila they can obtain the highest goal by their association with vaishnavas and by the grace of the holy name So this is an extraordinarily wonderful thing that in this kali yuga which has many faults that Sri Nam is present and can give all perfection. So Sri Guru Dev's statement to be uh prudent and chant Hare Krishna was so amazingly complete as an answer as to how we should view things in the world. So Sri Guru Dev's statement about being prudent is because we do live in the kali yuga. and we don't live in a vacuum we don't live uh, on an island of utopia that's void of any other considerations except our unfoldment and except the beauty of mahaprabhu's danya kali yu even in the greatest absorption of devotees practicing bhakti from time to time the external environment comes to bring test the external environment uh shows itself for what it is and in the kali yug uh that's not a pleasant thing in many cases so certainly 
the last resort, ultimate shelter of every devotee is the lotus feet of Sri Krishna and Sriman Mahaprabhu. Right? Krishna here means Radha Krishna and Sriman Mahaprabhu. So, no one thinks that their being prudent and the endeavors they perform in being prudent somehow supersede dependence on Krishna. At the same time, if it's freezing cold, you put on a coat. At the same time, if it's raining outside, you dress appropriately. At the same time, if your body becomes ill, you take measures to, to uh, get yourself uh, healed from whatever disease or sickness that might be. So we exercise prudence on a, on a daily basis in many, many ways. People go to work because they need to have an income in order to provide for their families if they're not living in mat life or ashram life. So every day we exercise prudence in so many ways. So the particular question that was asked to me was regarding a post of a unfortunate event that took place uh, in a place where many devotees live. Um, it wasn't an ashram or anything, it's just a housing complex. Many devotees live in that complex. And unfortunately, there was a shooting there. I don't know who was involved or what it entailed or any of those things. And it had nothing to do with devotees from what I understand. But because they live in that area and, you know, many devotees recognize that many devotees live there, uh, there was some discussion about it. So in the course of posting it and then commenting on it, uh, there were some comments uh, regarding you know, the negativity of firearms and, and the idea of the mentality that's possessed uh, here in America in particular regarding guns and all of these kind of things. And I, so I wrote some responses to those things uh, because I don't like to be involved in protracted arguments about stuff that's, or protracted discussions even about stuff that's not really directly relevant to my growth in bhakti, you know, I later just exited from the conversation. But I did receive an inbox question from somebody who was in that thread. Uh, maybe if they were in the thread or not, I don't know, but they must have saw it. And they wrote inbox me and asked me a question regarding the position uh, that I had about uh, firearms and this and that. And I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, obviously, I had a career that, you know, was in, involved in law enforcement and so forth. And um, I have obviously seen the results of people who were victimized by random violence. Uh, and it is a fact that for most people, they don't necessarily, I won't say most people, I'll say a lot of people, don't have access to an ability to have a chance at self-protection because in many cities and in many places, it's not something that's built into the law that you have an opportunity to either own a weapon or uh, uh, have some means of self-defense. And obviously the average person can't afford to have a personal security detail. Um, I've worked on security details, so that's why I'm bringing this up. And people who are either wealthy, influential, or entitled somehow, they have the benefit of that. Uh, they have the benefit of hiring people who have expertise in protective means. And so they have an immediate recourse to being prudent about the defense of their lives and the lives of their loved ones. But the average person is not in that category. And if they don't live in a place which allows them to have the ability to exercise a constitutional right to uh, own, uh, be trained, and carry a means of protection, then uh, in the atmosphere that we're living in, where violence is just part of the fabric of Kali Yuga, and in many cases it is inexplicable, want, uh, wanton and random violence, then many people uh, end up becoming victims of it. So my, my point here is that whether or not somebody chooses 
to exercise, if they live in a place where it's proper to do so or legal to do so, exercises a right to having an opportunity and chance for self-protection, that is their personal choice. And I don't think it should be stigmatized. I don't think it has anything to do with whether you're a devotee or not a devotee or this or that. I think if you are a devotee, I think it certainly comes in the category of being prudent uh, and chanting Hare Krishna uh, in the sense that we know that ultimately everything is dependent on Krishna. But just as I mentioned before, we exercise prudence in so many day-to-day -day activities uh, and still don't see that as being contradictory to our absolute dependence on Krishna. So in this manner of uh, wanting to have the opportunity or chance for the protection of yourself and loved ones, that one, if they decide to own or, or have a firearm and certainly to be trained because I don't certainly think anybody should uh, own a firearm or any weapon for that matter and not have some serious training in, in, in having that firearm or having whatever means of self-protection a person chooses to have. But I, I don't think, which was the devotee's conversation more or less, that it is contradictory or it is um, somehow opposing the nature of being devoted or being a devotee. So uh, I feel also very strongly in, in many ways that having seen uh, people who were victimized by wanton violence, whether it was domestic violence, whether it was uh, just violence that erupted from the atmosphere they may have been living in, or just the nature of Kali Yuga, anything can happen anywhere, that it should be that people feel comfortable and not stigmatized if they decide that they want for themselves and their loved ones the opportunity to have access to having an, an immediate means of self-protection if, if that need arises. So this is something each person has to make a decision on in their own uh, mind and heart. Uh, and whatever decision a person makes, that that's their choice. This is this is this is the um, free choice that people have in this regard. Um, my point was that the devotee was particularly asking me, do I see an inconsistency in being a devotee and having a firearm uh, or having any means of protection? And I, I, I wrote back just in a brief sense that it's a, it's a personal choice. And I emphasize that the necessity of legality and the necessary of training and the necessity of uh, having the proper mindset and everything else is, is paramount and, and super important if that's something you decide to do. Now, also, um, I spoke uh, to that person about the fact that you cannot legislate violence. People who are intent on mm, committing violence, for whatever reason they decide to do so, the least of their worries would be legalities regarding the means by which they're going to execute their violence. <laughs> so in other words, if somebody, uh, even if guns are illegal someplace, which you'll find in most of the places where the carrying of a firearm is illegal, uh, in those places sometimes you find the most and the highest rates of violence and crime. So you cannot legislate away what violence is. If people didn't have means to a firearm, then knives, hammers, fists, <laughs> or whatever it might be, would become the means by which they executed their violence and their mentality of violence. So the change of consciousness is the paramount thing if you want to change the atmosphere and change the world. In the course of that change taking place, we cannot dismiss prudence on behalf of those who have to live in environments where there are people who, because of their um, state of consciousness, find it um, easy to go out and victimize other people by acts of violence. We can't, we can't accept that that's okay. That, you know, that somehow or another, 
that will sprinkle people with a mystical fairy dust of our idea of utopia, and that should be enough to have people not carry out acts of wanton violence. That's just not how things work. So at the same time, an overabsorption in paranoia and an and over idea of, yeah, yeah, all I need to do is to get some means of protection and that's my everything. These ideas are also extreme on the pendulum to the other side. So as my Guru Parapadma said, we should be prudent and chant Hare Krishna. Uh, I remember at, uh, when uh, one of our communities was attacked by uh, the violence of a gang or something like that, then Srila Prabhupada ordered that uh, some devotees should be trained and they should be armed to protect the community. And I think a similar incident took place in Mayapur and I think armed guards were hired. So uh, the idea is that there's not a disconnect between practicing bhakti and unfolding in bhakti, being completely dependent on Krishna and being prudent in regards to the nature of the material world, especially in Kali Yuga. So I don't want to go on and on with this, and I, I'm not making declarations and proclamations about what people should or should not do. Uh, my, uh, what I'm saying is that any person should take into deep consideration the individual situation, uh, the individual um, uh, feelings about these things, and then follow the things which are uh, absolutely necessary in, in the decision you make if you do decide that you want to be someone who um, uh, keeps a means of protection. Uh, you should understand the legalities. You should understand, uh, you should be trained. Uh, you should uh, be responsible, uh, certainly mature. And you should understand <clears throat> that Anytime you do have a means of protection on yourself, it is not an option in dealing with things that happen in the Kali Yuga. It is a last resort, if anything, in the protecting of your life or the life of your loved ones. So, um, again, I don't, this is not particularly a subject, you know, um, though I have some expertise in the area, this is not a subject that's really something I want to do on here, but at the same time, I think I mentioned before, Somebody wrote me about relationships. Somebody wrote about something else. I don't want to not answer questions because they're not directly on, in the philosophical vein or in the vein of our unfoldment in practice. It is my preference. I think I, I said that clearly before as well uh, because I'm also unfolding and questions of that nature help to deepen my own sense of unfoldment, my sense of service to our Guru Vargas uh, like that. At the same time, if I was to simply dismiss any questions that came in which dealt with uh, pragmatic issues or vyaviharic issues, means external issues, uh, then it, it would be as if I'm saying that you know those things are unimportant. And for many people in their lives, the balance between vyavihara, means external life, and uh, your unfoldment in bhakti is, is a real thing, right? Uh, if anybody is Paramahamsa and they're absorbed, living in Braj, Navadvip Dham, Jagannath Puri, and uh, they have complete absorption on the Antra Dasha, means internal uh, absorption, uh, and therefore don't have any sensibility in the external world, that's one situation. If you do have uh, dealings with the external world and you're in your process of unfoldment, then Mahaprabhu is told, Antra Nishtakara Bhaya Lokya Vya Vyahar. That one internally should be deeply absorbed in their bhajan life and we should deal with the external world appropriately. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, again, I'm not advocating for one position or another, uh, nor do I have any interest in the political or ideological stances on any of these things. I'm simply speaking uh, about the balance between being prudent and chanting Hare Krishna, which is our. Uh, ultimate uh, position. So my Dhanavad pranams, Jai Vancha Kalpatruvishya, Kripa Sindhavevacha, Patitana Bhavanevyo, Vaishnavevyo, Namo Namaha, Jai Radhe Radhe.